Hi, I'm Julie Steele with O'Reilly Media, and I'm here at Strata in New York talking with John Choi, the Director of Product Management for Big Data at IBM. Uh, John, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Um, you gave a session earlier today in which you talked about sort of a holistic approach, and yeah. I wonder if you would kind of talk about that word holistic and what that means. Sure, today. absolutely. I mean, I think one of the challenges that we have with big data is that it's such a big topic, right? And everybody wants to get started, and it's very easy to get enamored with different things that are going on, and then also lose sight in terms of what context some of these new technologies and analytic types are being deployed under, right? So when I say holistic, it's holistic in the context of what it means for the business, right? Because at the end of the day, any investment that we make has to be a business decision. Any dollar you put in, you have to get about $52 back. But then they also, from an architectural point of view, a lot of these technologies won't live in a silo. In fact, if you and I are having this conversation three years from now, the way we think about this is, man, it's not a separate thing. We've done this all along. So think about what happens with relational databases. When that stuff first came about, everybody was like, oh, it's so special, I'm going to have a bunch of different guys. And for me to be able to even query it, I had to have somebody sit next to me to help me with the query. Now I can query it from my cell phone. It's, I can query it from my car, right? But it also means that it's part of an overall architecture that also fits into an overall vision of the business case but then also fits into a picture on top of that in terms of what's the direction of the company. What is the vision for the company in terms of how they manage, not just data, but information, and what they do with it. And that's why it requires a holistic point of view. So you talked a little bit about the infrastructure of the data and being able to access it from your cell phone or from other places that seem very accessible to everybody. Yeah. But what's special about enterprise big data that's different from small, small business big data? Um, well, so we can kind of look at it in a couple of different dimensions, right? So the obvious one is that, yeah, you know, I've got a lot of volume in the world. Uh, and that's one, one dimension. Of it. We'll see it just appear in terms of size. The other dimension that we see is just varying degrees of data types, right? And that's something that's common for a large enterprise or even a smaller enterprise in terms of what are all the data types that exist around my enterprise? And that's a conversation that people don't necessarily have is, what is the order of the possible? What is the, all the information that's around me that I haven't done something with? Now, relative to a bigger organization, if they're already mature in what they're doing with transactional data types or structured data types, and then the challenge is a little different from a smaller company that's saying, you know, I can build this thing from scratch. So again, this is why it requires a holistic view in terms of the architecture to say, I've already got a lot of money invested in, let's say, I'm doing structured data with relational databases. I want to augment that with new unstructured data types because each of them by themselves is not as useful as the two things coming together, right? So for instance, we talk about it in retail. Retail is a really good example. You say, all right, so I know what my customers buy. I know how much of these products sold. It's all transactional data types. Now you ask yourself the question, why? And we always have to either take a subset of data or infer it because we feel like we're limited in terms of truly understanding the human behavior that's associated with the data types. And so because of that, um, that the requirements, the requirements are different architecturally in terms of the vision of where people want to go between little, you know, smaller enterprises, mid-market to large one. It's still the same. Mm -hmm. What can I do with get more data? Eventually, landing on I want to be able to see everything. Yeah. Well, so there was a comment on a panel yesterday about how even when you have structured data, it may not be the right structure. There's yeah. structured data and then there's structured data. So can you talk a little bit about having all the data being able to see everything as you just mentioned versus having the right data in the oh, right yeah. format? I'm glad you asked me this one. Because this is a topic that does not get discussed enough. When we sit there and talk about big data, people say, oh, you know what, now I'm getting into the hundreds of terabytes range. I'm talking into petabytes. But then nobody starts with the question of, is that data any good? <laughs> Do I have access to the right information? Uh, so the notion of being able to integrate this data types together, but then now the notion of governing becomes a very big deal, right? That, that, that like I said before, three years from now, we're going to have a discussion where across all these different technologies, it's going to look like one thing. We're going to solve it in terms of having the end users or the applications be able to interact it as if it's one. In order to make that work, there's a lot of connective tissue involved there, right? Now the other cool thing about that is, in terms of the integration and governance, there's a lot of innovation that's going on in that front, but I actually feel more assured because that's not new computer science. We've already solved that problem for, I've got different silos of relational databases, right? So the frontier in terms of that effort is, 
what can I do to get the integration and governance, but then also include new data types, new data stores, mm -hmm. and so, so that's a really big point, right? And so, so, like I said, three years from now, we'll look back and say, yeah, we figured it out, and everybody's got all the data that they need, it's really good. So does Infosphere Big Insights uh, try to address part of that problem? Or? Absolutely, I mean, for Infosphere Big Insights, and so, you know, there are a couple of different dimensions to it. We fully embrace what's going on in the open source community. The, the at fundamental, the base substrate in Hadoop, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant piece of computer science. It's incredibly useful. And the amount of money that's being spent on this thing, whichever market opportunity number you look at, the return will be multiples on top of that for customers to deploy. Uh, but, given a couple of things, one, the, the maturity of the work. As great as the open source ecosystem is, some of the components are still maturing, and like they do, this is like with any product life cycle. Two, uh, that not all the problems are going to be solved in that domain, so the stuff like governance. So when we look at what we do with Big Insights, we say, yeah, at its core, we embrace what's going on with open source, right? And, and, and there's no forking going on or anything like that, which is one of the weird high things that are going on. But we want to do a couple of things to make it enterprise ready. So one, there is a performance issue, mm -hmm. right? That, yes, it may eventually get there, but it's not at the level of performance because Hadoop wasn't designed for it, right? I mean, it was designed for major batch jobs. The requirements for enterprise are very different. Two, the integrations. So we talk about that holistic vision. Our view at IBM, and I think the world's view on IBM, uh, in the world on Hadoop, is that uh, uh, two and a half years ago, three years ago, if we were talking about it, I think a lot of people would have been comfortable saying, oh, I'm just going to do a project on Hadoop, and I'm going to do some anal analysis on it, but it lists as a part of an architecture. So the integration with other systems, integration as it relates to governance is a big deal, and so we put a lot of capabilities in. Because one of the cool things about getting to work on Big Insights at IBM for me is that I'm a kid in a candy store, right? A lot of these pieces and capabilities are already out in the world. They've been in the world for a long time. So we'll, we'll integrate with those capabilities and offer these to customers. The third thing that we always focus on, worry about, is on usability, right? Now, usability in the sense that, oh yeah, you know, we want to be really cool and easy to work with, but there's an economics behind it. Right now, if you think about the amount of labor that's gone into deploying Hadoop, it's incredibly expensive, and too often we just look at it in terms of how much does the software cost to acquire, what's my hardware requirement, and then now I'm going to give it to my team and go do it. It's really difficult, and it's a lot of work that happens. So we look across all the different roles, right? You can look across the data administrators, the system administrators, and then now the other people, data scientists, integration developers, and those guys. And then we offer capabilities and forms and things like when we have big sheets. Another big piece in terms of usability is simply providing a SQL interface, a full anti-SQL interface over here. So that's the third piece. And then the fourth piece is on the analytics. The analytics is one of the frontiers here, right? Because underneath it, there are two different types of analytics that you can do. One kind is to say, you know what, I'm going to augment the analytics that I'm already doing. A lot of statistics-based methods with tools that I'm already using, and it's great to get more data. But if we're really going to pull off what I consider to be sexy about what's going on with big data, it's about being able to do analytics and being able to ask questions that you couldn't do before. And in the past, we're always limited by relational databases, and just purely mean variant statistical models. Now we say it's unstructured data. What about text analytics? What about natural language processing? And that's the kind of investment that we're making. And so as I look around, you know, for instance, with the analytics, we say, look, look at the work that we've done with Watson and the Jeopardy game. That's essentially what it was, 200 million pages of Wikipedia text. Leverage those same technologies, bring it over Hadoop, make it useful. So uh, the net of this is that we're trying to make Hadoop as enterprise ready as possible. Um, hopefully for IBM, we'll make some money al along the way, but I'll tell you personally, more important than that, is that, uh, you know, I think of that as my secondary mission. Uh, I'm so passionate about what's happening in Hadoop and how much promise that it can deliver, not in terms of business cases or how people get back, but what it can do for humanity. That you can ask really cool questions and be able to do things that you couldn't do before. And so I'm more interested in how do we accelerate this as a collective? All of us. So as I look around and say, well, some of these guys compete with me and some of them don't, they're partners. Uh, that's one at one level. But for me, the philosophical one is, these are all my partners in crime. I want all this to mature. Because I think uh, immediately you'll see enterprises doing this stuff and getting a bunch of benefit from it, but guess what? All of us will get tremendous benefit out of this thing in the end. Well, it's yeah. taking it right back to that holistic approach. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, and that's even the more holistic one, right? Yeah. This is like the human the meta, mandate. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Absolutely. thank you so much for talking with us today. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Thanks.